Welcome to another episode of Hub Chat. Today we are joined by the lovely Karina. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So the purpose of these chats is to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself uh, mm-hmm. to the community um, so we can all get to know each other a little better. So if you could start with um, just letting us a little know a little bit about the projects that you're working on at the moment. Okay. Um, so I'll start with I've been here three, three years uh-huh. um, and full-time three years with my family, with my, sorry, my husband and my twin girls. Um, I... Um, sort of two prongs. I have two hats. So basically, I'm the principal representative for a company called Ennis Global Mortgages. And what we do is we, um, it's creative finance, basically. Mm -hmm. So for high net worths looking to buy here. And when I say high net worths, I mean, they need to be buying over 1.5 million for it to be Mm -hmm. worthwhile in the fees and, and, and the setup. Um, what I found when I was here is that nobody, I was looking to buy, nobody asked me how I was going to pay for the properties. They were happy to take me on hundreds of viewings. Yeah. Um, and it was only after we were in the process, we find out about the wealth tax and all these like hidden, yeah. um, issues, which, you know, yeah, yeah. weren't familiar. So I saw a niche in the market here, you know, there's, everyone is in property some way, somehow, you know, yeah. half the island, either yoga sure. or, or property. Yeah, yeah, it's quite consistent. Um, so... Having come from property background for 15 years, um, doing property scouting or property search, I was keen to do that, but I didn't want to compete with everyone here. I wanted Mm -hmm. to find a niche. So I stood back and watched, and the niche was finance. So there's a lot of people with a lot of money here. They've got assets around the world. Um, They can't get a Spanish mortgage because they don't tick the boxes or they're not registered here for tax purposes or whatever it is. So what we do is we can borrow against their assets outside um, mm-hmm. and bring money in to buy the properties here. Okay. We leverage it high, so that helps mitigate the wealth tax. It's all done legally. Yeah. And, yeah. Great. That's, that's, one, that's one sort of area. And uh-huh. then by default, a lot of my clients are looking at properties and they either want to buy a second or the property they're originally looking at, which I'm getting the finance for, falls through because it has legal issues or whatever. Yeah. So they say to me, can you help me find something else? Okay. So originally I was just passing those on, but I found that didn't work because you've got you to know, rely on someone else. yeah, you got to rely on someone else, and you know they are really valued customers. Um, so I've, although I didn't want to, I've now fallen into the property search as well. So mm-hmm. I see the process through. So I'm collaborating with a number of agents, the ones who mm-hmm. think in the bigger picture, yeah, um, and see the value in what I on what I bring. I'm bringing a client who's willing and you know ready to to purchase, and I've okay. done their finance, so I know yeah. they are sure. So that's very kind of, very well rounded uh, yeah. approach. Yeah. yeah, it's fallen into place like that. It's kind of just what was needed and what what came. Yeah, yeah, nice, mm. nice. So um, let's uh, just take a little bit about your personal story now. So yeah. when did your when did your history with Ibiza start? So, it, ironically, I was living in Sydney when when I decided to come on holiday for the first time. Okay, so just I, around the corner. Yeah, just around the corner. So, um, yeah, about two thousand and seven, because I I'm from Malta, which is another little you know yeah. island with you know similar, um, passion in 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 the sort of music scene and the you yeah. know socializing and all of that. So yeah, I never yeah. really had a need to come to another island like Ibiza because yes. we had it all in Malta. Yeah, Except yeah, there yeah. I had my own boat, I had my own everything. Uh-huh. So why you know leave it? Yeah, yeah. But then I came over and I, I I fell in love straight away. I could see you know the people, the passion, the I love the fact that it's you know there's a, a real local uh, community, but there's also a really strong expat community. Yeah. And having lived around the world myself. I mean, I lived in New York for 18 years. I was born and brought up there. Okay. And then Malta for five, and then Sydney for eight, and then London for nine. And in here, I know what it's like to be an expat. And I know what it's like to be a welcomed expat yeah. in a community. Yeah. And one who is seen as an outsider and hoped to kept that way. Yes. And here I could see it was a lovely expat community. And, um, you know, the, the, the two sides really sort of... Uh, worked well together and supported each other yeah 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 so how long how long have you been here now you... i've been here full time for three years uh-huh. um i moved over when the kids were about a year and a half mm-hmm. um i thought london was good but not good enough and having lived in sydney i know what it's like to love where you live and really sort of appreciate the outdoors and the nature yeah and um i be there i be there had that so yes yeah so, so we... on the outdoors and the nature so like for people that are still in London or yeah. New York or Berlin and, you know, they're going through the situation we're all going through and they yeah. thought, one day I'd move to Ibiza. Mm-hmm. Um, 
some of the reasons why they should do that? Mm. Like, what are the, the winter activities that keep you busy? Well, I mean, I could sell in Ibiza all day long. Part of me is a bit scared too, because, yes. you know, you worry about all the people sure. coming in and then, you know, losing, you know, the, the charm of Ibiza. I think that's what happened to Malta, actually. They okay. really opened the doors to everyone and right. everyone saw how beautiful and amazing it was and the influx was so big that the island couldn't take it. And to me, they've lost their soul. Right. Ibiza's managed to keep that for now, so yeah. hopefully they do. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a great island. I mean, you've got beautiful weather most of the year. Mm. You know, you've got incredible walks and nature and the sea. Yeah. You've got, you know, keen cyclists and... Uh, you know, just people who actually care about the environment as well, which is nice. So yes. it's uh, not just a use and abuse, but, sure. but a nurture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is this kind of, yeah, economic and environmental sort of fusion, isn't yeah. there? Especially, I mean, we're lucky to benefit from that here. It feels like everyone has a similar kind of mindset. Mm. Um, just on the hub, obviously you've been a member for quite a while now, so mm-hmm. you've changed quite dramatically. Yeah. Um, how would you describe it to someone who hasn't been here yet? I do this on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> So how do I describe it? I just say it's an absolutely beautiful place to work. I mean, aesthetically, but the people as well. There's a really strong community and um, the 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 offerings here are great. It's, you know, great value, which you don't see much of in Ibiza, if I'm sure. honest. Yeah, so for yeah. that, it is. It feels like, you know, you, you, you're getting what you pay for and more. Mm-hmm. But it's something that's, you know, not just a take. It's a lot of, you know... Uh, give and take and yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. willing to help each other and, and, and that is nice yeah. so um yeah i'd see perfect location great great energy great working space you get to perfect. you know do your fitness if you want to you can incorporate it all and you don't have to travel far yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. Amazing. everything everything comes to you yes <laughs> yeah 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 and just finally the way we're wrapping up we're trying to inspire people mm-hmm. um looking back on your career mm-hmm. what's the thing you're most proud of so looking back on my career, and I've done so many things. I think the thing I was most most proud of, I worked for WWF, the wildlife, um, okay. when I was in Sydney. And yep. I was on the core team um, working on Earth Hour, okay. which is, you know, turning off the lights. And basically yeah. the whole thing was just involving the world yes. in a small action um, that everyone could be part of. So not looking out and saying, oh, look what they did to help. What can I do to help? Yes. And... I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've done a lot. I've worked on, you know, the Australian men's and women, uh, Australian Open, golf and tennis. I've, okay. you know, been like, worked with hundreds of celebrities and done yeah. all that. But the, the Earth Hour and WWF was my most proud. Quite rightly so. Just, it was a real, a real game changer. And I think, you know, the lights went off externally, but internally something really woke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Karina, yeah. thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Nice Thanks. one. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>